All right, everyone. Welcome to the second part of this particular, you know, dashboard. This is the part where we're going to start writing DAX and uh, looking forward to seeing how Copilot could actually help us to write some DAX, you know, code and stuff like that. So if you have not watched the first part of this video, you might want to take a look at how to go into the first part and look at what we have done, how we have transformed our data and clean it up to get to this particular stage. Very interesting insight we want to actually gather from here. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get it. I, you know, I told you I'm going to use more of the, you know, co-pilot to have everything I'm going to do down. Uh, it can be everything, but whatever the co-pilot can handle for us. So why is the need of we, you know, trouble ourselves, you know, trying to crack our brain to do that? So let us just utilize the co-pilot and see how the co-pilot can actually do great things for us. All right, let us ask Copilot to actually um, give us the total transactions. So I'm going to do this. So as you can see, I just said, how many rows do we have in the fact table? I told you, you must understand what you want and know how to frame it. So we're going to come here now and do generate, you know, the DAX measure for me. So let's just watch that. It's loading the suggestion. So now we have this. If I scroll all the way down, I can click on add and this is going to be added and I can change its name. I'm just done doing this, right? Let's look at this. So double click on this and I'm going to just say numbers of transaction. So hit the enter key. So always confirm this if you're working and you want to use the copilot, try to make your confirmation. Can we confirm this? Okay, somebody just said yes. Yes, we can confirm this. So like right now, we have 260096, right? So if I come here now, I will click on the fact table. So let's do this. Okay, I think we are on the dead table now. Okay, here is the fact table. So we're on the fact table. On the fact table, if you look beneath here, you see fact table 260096 rows. Can you see that? That is our transaction. Right? So we have just gotten that. And the next thing we need to do right now is to calculate the total quantity purchased all right let's say we want to see the total quantity we have sold so we can simply say uh sum the quantity column in the fact table and all we just have to do is to generate the code that is all so let's see that so here we go you can scroll down and we can click on add to add this so let's see so, right, it got it right. So it's going to sum the total quantity for you. And uh, here I can just say total quantity or quantity sold. So let's say total quantity, like QTR, QTY sold here. All right, from what we have just gotten from Copilot, we can definitely say, okay, now we want to start to create our visualization. But the problem is that the Copilot might have not done this on the right table. Let's just go ahead and look at this. Our transaction, our numbers of transaction is sitting in the fact table. So we have to make sure we move it to the right, you know, table. And that is going to be the measure table that we have created previously before now. So we have the quantity sitting right here. We just have to move it right to this particular place, right? So this is what it is. So now we have all that. So what we need to do right now is to start to create our visuals, right? So the very first thing I'm going to do now is to actually bring in my total transaction right here. So get it into, into a card. So we have it. So here we go. Our numbers of transaction. Um, oh, sorry, numbers of revenue. So I want to some kind of format this revenue. So we are going to use the dollar number formatting. And I want to take off the extra decimal I yeah, I'm having on it. So go to this particular auto and turn it to zero and hit the enter key to commit it. And that is all you need to do. So I wouldn't love to have it in that short form due to how I want to visualize this. So all I have to do right now is to click on my visual itself and definitely go right here. And uh, you go down to where we have this writing. Then we can just go ahead and say from this, we just want to use none. And that is exactly how we can actually achieve this one right here. 
So for the formatting, let's do 21 instead of 45. Let's do 21 here. And 21 seems to be cool. So I love it. I love 21. So I want to leave it on this DIN formed type. And let's just drag it and have it somewhere around here for now. So we shouldn't care much about the formatting. We're going to do it later. So I always love to take off the white background. But in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let me leave it for later. So now we need to get in our quantity. So go here now and total quantity sold. So here we have it. So we have the total quantity sold. I want to do the same formatting for that. So we just have to say we don't want to see this, put it on now. And here we go. So we need one more formatting to do. That is we clicking on the measure itself and select the card. Click only on the measure for the quantity sold. Where the heck are you? Oh. Uh, yeah, so here we go. So, so, so we should have the comma separator. Why don't we have that? Okay, let's step off from here and let her return back now. Let us select this. Um, the format option is not actually active. What could be the problem? Okay, let's select here and let's put this in general. So let's see that. Yeah, sure, it's back. So now we can click here. Now let's click on the comma separator. That is going to be right on this one. And the last but not least is for we to actually uh, go on this particular previous formatting and give it the same formatting. That is all we want. So click here and uh, use the format painter. Please don't, uh, please don't, please don't need. Okay, now we're going to have this right here close to this one. So we have one more. All I can do now is just to copy and paste this one in. And I'm just going to move this one down. And this is where we have to bring in our total transactions. To do that, you can click here and uh, we can just click on this option and click here. You can just go to your numbers of transactions right here. And that is what you got. OK, we just have to click on this particular part and do this formatting as well. So make sure you use general. So let's that work on it. So you can use the comma separator this time around. So we have gotten we have gotten this part already. So we need to actually create the total revenue uh, for our manager. So we want to see our revenue by manager. And all we can do is to select the right chart. I want to use this particular donut chart right here to do that. And uh, this is where it's going to look good for me. So I'm just going to move it straight down right here. That's some kind of get this get this and for this one now i can do this so here we go all right so for this one i want to go in and bring in my manager and that is going to be under the dimensional table called source person so we have the manager right here so i'm going to pick it up so pick the manager and for the other axis we go with the revenue here so now can you see it now we have this. So don't bother about the formatting for now. We are going to do that later after all. But for now, just let us stick to getting all we want. All right. I need one more. And that is going to be this. So we can make our choice between either this chart and uh, this other chart. So if you want to change chart, you can not come here and click on this. It's going to insert a different chart for you, right? Uh, I think, okay. I think in the current version now, we can change. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I just updated my Power BI and I love what I see. Previously, before now, if you click here while you have inserted a particular chart, it wouldn't actually change it for you. Instead, it will add a new chart. But right now, it's working. If yours is not like this, that means you have not updated your Power BI to the current version. Okay. Now we have this. Let's say we want to go with this. And right here, I need to go with the channel. So click here or you can go to where you can have your channel writing. So let us go to the fact table here. And the sales channel should be in the fact table. Go ahead and pick it up. So what we want to see is this the revenue. So by channel. And this is what it is that, that we have. So I'm going to have it somewhere around here like this. You get it? So now under option you can use is using this particular chart. And I believe this chart will definitely convey the message you want. So I love this so seriously. I want to keep this. I want to keep this right here. So that is beautiful. Okay, let us go uh, for a chart like this particular, you know, um, chart here. 
So the chart is called line and stacked column chart. So we click on it and insert it. So I'm going to have to extend it to this level. So nicely done. So, okay, the very first thing I'm going to do now is to bring in my date right to the X axis. Click on here and let's go to the calendar. So I'm going to push in this. That is beautiful. So now, after this now, we go to the column Y axis, which is this one here. We bring in our total revenue. So let's go to the measure and we bring in the total revenue right here. And that is beautiful, right? So let's see, let's see what we have. Um, I'm trying to look at this. Let's go ahead and change the dates to something much more interesting. Um, I think we should create what I call hierarchy and drag it in all at once if that is what we want. So we can create a hierarchy. In case you don't know how to create a hierarchy, let me show you how to do that. So go all the way to your calendar here. So we can now click on the, uh, on the, I think on the year. So right click and you see where it says create hierarchy. So we've just created hierarchy and instead of hierarchy, what we have right now is just the year. So now we can go to our month. After the year, we go to our month and we bring in the month, right click and it says add to hierarchy. So we have the year hierarchy, add it up. So we go to the quarter as well. Click on the quarter right here. Then right click and add to what? Add to hierarchy year. Go ahead and add it. So we have just done that right now. So we have, you know, all three of them inside the same you know, hierarchy. Okay, let's see how we can actually update our chart to look much more beautiful than this one. So what you can do now is to click here and go to the date part here and I choose the hierarchy. So my hierarchy is this. It has this particular, you know, icon here. It says year hierarchy. We can name our hierarchy to whatever we want. All you do is to right click and rename it. Let us pick this. And nicely we have this, right? So we can use the drill down and drill up and all of that. So can you see this now? Can you see this? So let me show you the beauty of this. If you look at this particular part right here, this very arrow down, if I actually hover over it, what you see is click to turn on drill down. So if I click it, I have this little circle that is black on it. So what is going to happen right now, if I click on 2020, it's going to drill down to the month level. So let's find out. Can you see that now? Can you see what we have right here? So if I click here and I go to 2019, Let's see what we have. And all my visuals get some kind of, you know, updated automatically to, you know, this particular year we have selected. I think a lot of people doesn't know how to use this. I've just kind of shown you how you can actually, you know, use this right now. So let's say we want to keep 2019 in view. That is good. If you don't want it, you can go to this 2020 right here and you have this view. It depends on what or the kind of view you want to have. So let's say we want to have a view that looks just like this. And this is exactly what we want. Okay, we are trying to compare our, you know, revenue with our budget. So all we need to do right now is to go to the um, y, line Y axis. Let's scroll down. This is it here. Can you see it? Click on it and let's go to the merger. So remember we've created our total budget using the sum and we sum the budget, and this is what we have right now. So we have a line right here for us. All right, can you see it? So we can drill down to quarter if you want that. So you can choose to use this. So there are so many things you can do with this. Can you see? So it depends on what you want. So it's all a choice, whatever view you want to see. So just click on it, it's going to give it to you. So do you see that now? It's in this, we, in this particular year, we only have three, oh, okay, three quarters, right? So we're drilling it down based on quarter. So this is all we have to do to this particular chart right here. And this is beautiful. Can you see that? So on this part right here, we want to insert a closed third bar chart like this one here. So in this particular chart, what we want to show up here is the top three, you know, product. But later after all, we are going to make it dynamic, right? I believe you know what I'm talking about. 
So what we're going to do now is just for which some kind of uh, go inside of our product. So, 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 so the names of the product is what we are going to get in there. So if you look at it in detail, we do not have the product table right here. So which means we have to bring in another table. So let's do that. So click here and double click on this. So give it some time. So here we have a table. So this is the table that contains our product and this one has a product name. So yes, the same thing. Go ahead and click on this and let us go ahead and load. Oh, we just load, we didn't check it. That's my bad, please. That was a big mistake we made. So we should have checked it to see if the data is clean before we can be able to bring it in right here. So quickly, we can just use this particular transform. And let's go to that. Aside that, we don't love to keep that name, that generic name called table. So we want to change it. So here we have the table. All right, this is fine. I can just double, uh, double click on it and say oh, dim underscore table and I click on OK and that is OK. So now if I check across all of the columns, they are looking very good. I can just go ahead and say close and apply this time around. So now I can go ahead and bring in my product. So here we have our product here. So, so we go into the product table. Where are you? Oh, okay. Let's click on this and see where that is going to be. Um, finding my product table. I couldn't find it. Where the heck are you? Oh, we look at it. Sorry, we didn't name you rightly. So we're going to change it to products. All right. So we have our product right there. So let's just check the relationship and see if everything is okay. So scroll to this end here. And we move, move it, let us have it here. And now I'm going to go ahead and just stretch things around. Let's do this. So for our product, we have our product ID on our product key. That is right, so it's okay. Uh, we're not here to learn about modeling, so I believe you understand this if you are watching this. is much more advanced way of creating dashboards, so not the elementary part. So click here now, and uh, we are going into our product table, and we bring in our product name here. So we want to show this by revenue, so we can go ahead and bring in the total revenue here. So we have all the products we have inside our table. So this is not what we want to see. We don't want to see all of them. So all we have to do right now is to make sure we filter it down to what, to the top three or the top four, or the top five, whatever it is. So, but here now we don't have, can you see, we have lots of products. We don't have that ability and we are not going into that right now. So we just want to create our visualization and after all, we follow it up to do what we want. So now that we have gotten this right here right now, we have a table to be created. And inside that table, let's find out what is going to be there. So we have two different types of table here. We have the table and we have the metrics. Go ahead and click on the metrics and have it inserted. Let's kind of enlarge the table for now. Okay. Inside the table, the very first thing I want to have is my supervisors. So let's go to this. So um, we are going to get in our supervisor. And that is going to be this here. Secondly, I want to get in my salesperson. And that is this one. So we don't actually want the way it is. It's taking this across, so we have to make sure we fix this. So we drag this one and put it right here. And that is beautiful. Can you see that? Nice. Let us quickly have this formatted. So click on this part here and let's go to the value. And let's put this value to 11. That is nice. Um, For the... So for the header, we want to do 10 for the header. That is fine. For the row header here, we want to do 11 as well. So we do 11. That is nice. Okay, now we can bring in the value. 
So the value now would come in and it will definitely change everything. So the first value we want to have right here is actually our total revenue. So which is here, click on it and click here and bring in our total revenue here. So if I drill down, so you can see, so total revenue for all of this, but it's not really looking cool. So I want to have the percentage of my revenue. Let's check it out. If the co-pilot could do it for us or we should do it ourselves. Let's find out. So before we start creating this, let us go to here. So now we have the quantity here. So we want to create percentage of uh, quantity ordered. So remember we have supervisor and uh, we have the uh, salesperson, right? So we want to create a percentage over both the supervisor and the salesperson. So how can we make this easy for, you know, the co-pilot to, to do it for us? So if the co-pilot gets it right, I'm going to show you how to do it because there is something I want you to understand. Let's find out. So uh, here we have dim salesperson, right? So I'm just going to click on the co-pilot here and let us see how we can generate that. So I'm going to say a uh, percentage of quantity over the dim salesperson. So let us go ahead and click on generate and see what it is that we have. So let's see, we have 100%. So let us add this and see. So we have obstruction now. Uh, you just want to name this and step out to just remove this one so that we can see all our code very well. I'm going to do PCT for percentage of QTR here. So if I hit my enter key now, we have just created our measure. Okay, let me move this away. So now we have to step back in to look at what we have done. So the PCT is here, we are moving it, but before we move it, let us look at this. So now let's see what this is doing for us. So it says, uh, first of all, it created a variable and in this variable, it went and calculate the sum of the quantity. Yes, thumbs up for you. And it removed filter from the sales person. That is another thumbs up for you, right? So now it's created under variable and this variable is just the sum of the quantity. Whoa, can you see that? Yeah, I love this. And the next one is now like the return is the divide the, you know, uh, filtered value, which is this particular one where we have remote filter from and the main value, the main measure. And we got this. So now all we can do is just to select percentage here to format it. So we're going to put this into a table and look at it and see what it is. And we can now see how we can write the same thing that the co-pilot has generated for us. Let's find out. I'm um, going to do this. Let's bring this in here. So can you see what we have? Seems to be awkward. So it got some part of it right, but not exactly what we want. I don't know if this is some kind of uh, based on how we framed it. You can try it on your own and see if it could get it right. But right now we have to fix things. So let us go into the measure and uh, start fixing things. So let us just edit this very one here. So because we have a measure already in place, we don't have to use the calculate function to do this again. So what we can do is to use our measure. I'm just going to get this particular part off, like all this part here. We don't need them. So sorry for that. So just let's get this part deleted. So delete this particular one as well. So for the first variable here, what we can do is to actually use a calculate function. And in this calculate function, do we have use calculate function with this? Yes, we use a calculate function. So we're going to use a calculate function over here. In this calculate function, we're going to say, okay, we have a measure and the measure is total quantity sold. So inside this total quantity sold, we want to remove filters. So shift enter 
we use the remove filters here. That is um, so remove filters. So we are going to remove filter from supervisor. So shift enter. So we remove filter from supervisor. This is not the best way to do it, but I just want to show you this very way to do this. So once we have done that, we close this and we hit a uh, comma, shift, enter. We want to as well remove filters from what? From our salesperson. So from salesperson, then we can now close this. That is beautiful. So we have done that, shift, enter. We can close our calculate. Do you get that? Let me hit the enter key to get this particular one off because I selected a particular chat. That is why it's showing up right here. I'm sorry for that. A big sorry, please. Okay, click away. So now let's go to here. So now here we have it. So the very first thing we did was to use the calculate function here. Inside the calculate function, we try to actually remove filter from the total quantity sold. So inside our table, we have supervisor, we have salesperson. So we use the remove filter function to remove filter from them. So after that, now, instead of us to have this sum inside this particular measure value right here, so we are going to actually directly call the, the measure quantity sold here. So this is what the, what I call it, the copilot did not do for us. So we called it. So all we have to remember is this name here. So under the return right now, so we are going to see under the return, we are going to divide filtered value, which is this one by measure value here. Let us hit the enter key and see what the result will be. If the result would be differ from what, um, let's see, let's see, we don't need this. Let's remove this. Now hit your enter key. All right, let's find out. So as you can see, we have it correctly here. So, so, so we are going to turn this into a percentage. Let's select percentage here. Um, wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, okay, I know the problem. So sorry for that. Let's fix that. We go here. So we are to divide. Let's do this. We are removing this here. So we are to divide our, you know, let's. So we want to divide our measure value. Our measure value by the filtered value so let's hit enter key this time around we should get it right so even what the copilot generated for us was correct it's just that it divide the wrong value for us that was what the copilot did let's get into this now can you see it now we have the correct one let us go ahead and find out if we still have that copilot on here so we still have it right i'm gonna click on the add now let's turn things around here and see if this will there. Um, okay, is called measure. I want, don't want to call it measure. I want to call it um, percentage measure. So let's do this here. So let us see the enter key. So now, okay, sorry, we have to swap this, right? So we are swapping this for it to work. So the copilot get, got some part of it right. So just go ahead and remove this. So here the copilot got it wrong. So we are dividing our, you know, our measure value by this filtered one here. So by the time I hit my enter key right now, let's go and find out if we turn this into a percentage, let's see what's going to happen. So a percentage here. So let's bring in that one into here and see. So do you see it now? We have the same thing. So let us check it out. This is what the copilot has generated for us. 
So we're going to compare this one to what we formatted and created ourselves. So on the copilot, on the copilot, freshly create an embedded measure inside variables for us. So in the one we have created is some kind of a bit shorter. We actually went ahead and used the existing measure to do this. We are still using the calculate function, but we did not use the sum function over here because already we have our measure in place. So you can now see the difference between what we have done from what the copilot has, you know, able to generate for us, right? So there is no need to use the sum over the fact table again because we already have all the total quantities sold created here as an explicit measure. Do you see that? That is beautiful. So we were not supposed to create this for now. We are supposed to create for revenue, but we've created for quantity. That is fine. No problem. So now what we can do now is to actually get in our just... Okay, it's very simple. This one here, we can come here. Let's do here. We can copy this one. Ctrl C to copy. And we come to this very variable here. We control A, delete it, and paste this one inside here. So instead of me to calculate for quantity, I'm going to say percentage for revenue of revenue. So percentage of revenue. So you know, it's very simple. In this percentage of revenue, all we just have to change is the measure we have right here. So let us remove this one to this level and we plug in the revenue. So you get that. So we come here and remove all of this and plug in the total revenue. Aside that, do we have to use the remove filter twice? What if we want to remove filter from multiple columns in one single table? So what do we do? We just specify that particular table we want to remove filter from. So which means this particular second remove filter is not really important. We can go ahead and have it removed. So let us just highlight this part and have it deleted. So, so, so. We just need to delete it. Okay. One part we need to delete again is that we don't have to specify column. So we can specify the table. So we remove this particular, uh, sorry. So we remove this supervisor here. So that column is gone. So we are only using the table now. So what is going to happen in this particular situation? Irrespective of how many columns we have in a table, let's say we have 10 good columns. Uh, columns in a table. So when we use the remove filter, it's going to go into this particular 10 table and remove from first column, second column, third column, fourth column, down to the 10th column. Instead of we to specify the individual column like the supervisor, like the manager, like the sales person, whatever, you just do this and you are covered. Just do this, you are covered. Can you see it now? So we would have allowed Copilot to do this for us, but we are learning here. We don't give everything to Copilot to do. So we are just going to see how we can, you know, uh, but trace what Copilot has done. So now we have this. Let us find out if this will definitely work. If I hit my Enter key right now, we need to convert this to a percentage. What is wrong? I think there is something wrong somewhere. somewhere. Okay, that is going to be this one. Let's go ahead and remove it. So it should be fine now. All right. Okay. Now, turn this to a percentage. Okay. Let's go here. Can you see it now? So this is for revenue. So which means we have to click here and swap things around. So just click here and... Uh, the percentage for quantity should be moved down. Let's just move this one up. Or we can move this down. Until you see this green before you release it. So we've swapped things around. Uh, but I wouldn't love to use, you know, the name. All I just want to use here is just normal percentage. So what I'm going to do now, uh, it is for my 
uh, revenue, I'm just going to tap it and just put normal percentage here. And that is all I need for now. Okay, we have to bring in one more column and one more measure rather. Right and that is going to be my quantity. So I'm going to click here now. I'll bring in my total quantity sold. And that will come before the percentage. So all we have to do is to click on the percentage and drag it down until you see this particular blue. Release it. And uh, for the percentage here, we just do this. And we hit our enter key. And that some kind of creates this for us. Can you see it now? Beautiful. So now this is what it is that we want to do. So we can just some kind of make it a bit smaller. So let's some kind of compress like this one. So here we go. We have something like this. This is okay. So the next thing is for we to actually make sure we add some other functionalities and make our dashboard to look much more catchy, much more beautiful. Right now it's looking a bit ugly and I hate looking at this, right? 